Hi everyone, so finally I have received our new palette knives. I had these made to my specifications in Italy and I love them, they are so nice. Uh, I had them made with uh, olive wood handles which are super beautiful. Of course each handle is different and they have brass ferrules and the blades are stainless steel. They are tempered by hand and really nice and flexible. So I'm going to be talking to you about the different shapes and what I use them for. Some of you have told me that you don't really use uh, palette knives in your studio and I find them absolutely essential. So maybe you will find something useful there. Um, we have eight models. I'm going to give a bit of a guideline to how to use them. But of course, there are no rules. Everyone has their own preference. Your work is your own. Maybe you work with uh, bigger or smaller sizes than me and you may find different uses for them. But as a guideline, I may help you. These six I mainly use for painting on enamel and these two at the kiln. So I have three different sets in the store. Uh, I made a selection for what I think is more useful for most amount of people. These two are the kiln set for use around the kiln, of course. And then these two are for vitrifiable painting. And then I also have the, the five of them together as a studio set. Like, I think with that you're really quite covered. But then, depending on your personal preference, you may prefer one of these three and those are available separately. So I'm going to be looking at them more closely, one by one. And then I'm also going to be showing them all in use. Okay, so this one is the larger kiln uh, knife. I really think this one is mostly useful for the kiln. Although if you are blending a really, really large amount of paint, maybe you will find it useful. If you are making very large work like a silk screening, for example, you will need to mix a lot of paint and then this one can be useful. So otherwise I like to use it to move kiln furniture around when it's hot. I mostly fire on ceramic fiber. I then have put some kiln wash here. This one is kaolin. And of course, when this is in the kiln, it's very hot. So I take it out with my uh, big spatula or a fork is the same. And then to move it around and to put pieces on top, I use my large uh, palette knife. So this one is large enough to deal with this kind of medium size. And it's also good when your firing surface is larger. If you work with larger sizes, you may need two of these. I keep two around because I have a small kiln that is this size, but then I have another one that's like four times larger. And then I need uh, something more sturdy for each hand. For every day, I make mostly like jewelry sizes. Then I would use uh, a large and a smaller one. This is 95 and 16 uh, slash two, and that's sufficient. And of course, it also works with mesh or whichever other support you use. As you can see, this one has a bend. I find them extremely useful to get under there. And also when I'm lifting pieces from between the two sticks I use, I always keep my pieces on two sticks on the surface. So I bring this entire surface to my kiln. And that's very good to not disturb the enamel when you are moving it around. And then this bend shape works very well to pick up the pieces like that and place them on the support for firing. Of course, if you are dealing with really small pieces, you may find that, for example, the 160 knife works nicely to get under there. And if you're working with really, really tiny stuff, like that one there, maybe the 100 works well for you. Uh, it's good to have two to help yourself with. and then you can move it on to your surface or maybe to your trivet. Another thing I would like to mention is that I don't like to mix the uses. For example, these are new and they are all nice and shiny, but when you use them on the kiln, the heat starts to discolor them. And then they get, they don't really flake because they are stainless steel, but after they have been discolored, I don't like to use them for blending enamels anymore. So I keep a set around the kiln and I don't use it for enameling. So this is a newly wet packed piece. Uh, it's still wet here on my surface and sticks as I normally work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on top of the kiln to dry. So in this case, I'm gonna be using the 95 bent uh, palette knife. And this one just goes in between the sticks easily. And here you go put it there to dry. 
Okay, so now it's been there for a few minutes and I think it's dry. So I'm gonna fire it. If you find that it's a bit slippery with one spatula, you can always use two. And if you find that it's still too slippery, you can always sand the knife a little bit with the uh, emery board, emery paper. Okay, so before I stick it into the kiln, I always check that there is no vapor coming out. I don't want my enamel to boil out. And once I'm sure it's dry, I put it in. Right. So even if it's flat, I always have a habit of double checking with my spatulas. I can use two small ones or a big and a small one or even two large ones. Just to check that everything is flat. And remember that if you push too early, you may leave a mark, but don't worry too much. Uh, next time you fire it, it's probably gonna disappear. But yeah, wait a couple of seconds. Let's try something a little bit different here. I have a base that uh, I made a while ago and it's completely odd shaped. Actually, it's not meant to uh, lay flat against the surface anywhere in particular since it's meant to imitate like a rock. But however, it just rocks a bit too much. As you can see here, that rocks too much. So I'm gonna just lightly fire it and try to make it just a tiny bit more stable. So here we are working with jewelry sizes and I'm going to be using the spatulas that come in the kiln set. Well, that's in the kiln. I can show you up here on top of my kiln. I have a couple of old sticks. Uh, I like to put pieces here to dry and as you can also see I have here some um, antique irons this is a small one and I have a medium one which is the one I use the most and then I have a very large one which actually never gets used <laughs> so these are useful for flattening flat pieces so if I have a really completely flat piece I will take the iron and flatten it on the surface uh, they are always here so that they get hot as the kiln is on after like a couple of hours they really get quite hot because you don't want a thermal shock of course so it's better to to use something warm okay this is actually now over fired <laughs> but never mind about that so I will pick the piece up and now that it's uh, it's very hot right now so I wait a few seconds and then I can push Okay, and that's a lot better now. It doesn't rock so much. So this uh, piece had opalescent enamels and some opaques. And when it's overfired, it gets a little bit transparent, but I'll fire it again and it will come back. So yeah, with odd shapes, you can also push wherever you feel you need to shape the metal a little bit. Okay, so I have a flat piece here drying now and I actually bent it with my fingers before I wet packed it. So we'll see what we can do with it. And I'm gonna fire it first. I'm gonna put it on a trivet because it's flat.
and I can actually see some paper here on my knife so I'm gonna have to dry it a little bit more I'm just gonna get it at the door see if I get any vapor coming out just a tiny bit it's always better to dry pieces on top of the kiln I find that they get less texture or bubbles if you do that yeah there is no vapor coming out anymore so let's fire it all right Here comes so I first always like to put the piece out of the tree very carefully because sometimes it sticks on the edges a little bit And now it's time to flatten it. So that's not too bad. It took me a while to get it out of the trivet, so it cracked a little bit here because I pushed pretty hard. So it's better to push when it's still quite hot. But of course, if it sticks, uh, you lose a bit of time there. It's better to clean your trivets. I don't because I don't use them so often, but it's already quite flat. And you can do, of course, do this uh, a couple of times. I, uh, that was a pretty extreme bend there. And if it's a larger piece, I like to use the iron. So you can get these in the flea markets or so for like five euro, five dollar, depends on your area, I suppose, or on eBay. And for fat pieces, just every time they come out, I put the iron on top. Uh, but as you can see, that's pretty flat, doesn't rock, and that little crack, it will heal in next fire. So, yeah, I'm, I've been exaggerating a little bit here <laughs> to show you what you can do. Normally, your pieces are not that bent. You don't bend it with your hands, you don't torture them over trivet or anything like that. So, it will just be a slight uh, coaxing into shape. So, this is just some old palette I have, which is quite bent here, uh, as you can see. It's a larger format uh, work, about 10 centimeters wide, and I simply have a really bent edge here. As you can see from this side, it's quite a gap in there. It should be laying flat there, but there's a gap of about half a centimeter actually. So we have to flatten that up. And now I need to get that onto the surface without burning myself so being a larger uh, being a larger format work I'm gonna be using two of the larger spatulas 16 slash 2 to put them on the surface and then I use one to help myself lift to get my fork under there and into the kiln. Okay, so now I'm only gonna fire long enough to be able to form this uh, shape. So it doesn't need to be there for long. I'm just gonna wait until the, until the enamel has softened enough that I can push on it. The copper is already annealed. Every time you fire, it's annealed again, so it's always soft. We don't have to worry about the metal, I only have to worry about the enamel. So now I have to hurry, but not too much, because if I push on the piece too early, what I'm gonna do is leave some marks, spatula marks. So I wait a moment, and then I'm gonna help myself. With one spatula, I'm gonna hold the work, and with the other, I'm gonna push down. And that's already quite good but yeah it was really really bent so I'm gonna have to do this twice you already can see that it's out better I actually really exaggerated that I bent it myself 
pushing on top of a trivet so you normally don't have such a deformation but I wanted to show you how far you can take it uh, I'm gonna wait for this to cool down and clean the edges and then I will do it again I have now three points of view Okay, so now I'm going to try to push here a little bit more, in fact I can also use the tiny spatula just to get a more pinpoint pressure where I need it to be. And as you can see, that's kind of fixed now. you can get a good view of it. We now have a straight edge. So okay that was quite extreme, that was an extreme bend that I made on purpose to illustrate the point but if you're working with dome pieces such as these, uh, especially when you start having uh, heavier coats, you may see that the tips may start curling up or if you had an off sh odd shape with ins and outs you may have to push in certain places so if you do this every time you fire it never gets too much out of whack so I have a like a third sense by now and a habit of every time I take the piece out of the kiln kind of checking around I already have my uh, knives in my hand from moving the piece out of the surface and I just will always uh, try to get it to not rock or wiggle and if there is anything wrong I just push down on it uh, of course it depends on the size of the piece I will be using larger knives or smaller knives or even uh, tiny ones if I'm working with really small earrings or something so yeah uh, which knives you need depend a little bit on the size of your work Okay, so I'm gonna be making some vitrifival paint and I will show you the knives. These two are the ones that are included in the set. Uh, the small one is symmetric and the large one is like a knife shape and the alternatives you have are the opposite. The small one is a knife and the large one is symmetric. So again, that's a question of personal preference. Um, normally, if I am mixing a small amount of paint, I will use the small knife and if I'm mixing a larger amount I'm using the large one that's in general terms but I don't always do it that way I however always use two because I mix with one and then I help myself with the other one to make a little amount and place it where I need it to be so I'm gonna be mixing some with these two and showing you how they work and I'm gonna be using my usual liquid paraffin medium this is my favorite medium I use other mediums only when I need some special effect. You will find more details about mixing the paints and also about using them in my video about it in the S64 video. I will link in the description. So as you may have seen there, I always like to mix my paints quite stiff. I don't like to make it too liquid because I can always add more medium if I need to but I cannot take it out. So let's not put too much medium. And due to the motion that you use when you're mixing uh, the trifiable paints I always prefer to have a more of a flat and knife type of shape. Often you will find that the painter's knives have this bend to them and that's very good for oil paints and also for painting with these knives since it has 
space here for your hand and your fingers but when it comes to paint, to mixing the paints these knives tend to be more flexible and they also tend to have a thin point so that's not so useful for actually mixing the paints and these flat ones have more body for that. So as you can see, I often choke on the knife and I, I put my finger here to have a bit more strength. Maybe that's personal preference. Of course, you can also hold them in the handle, but I find that I have more control if I grab the actual blade. When you have a small blade like this one, then you have less space to be mixing because you're not going to be mixing with the hard part of the blade. This is what gives strength and spring. So for a small amount, this small is good enough. And now I'm going to collect all the paints. Make sure it's very well incorporated. There is no graininess anymore. Let me get closer. You see it's perfectly smooth. And now I'm going to keep my knife aside and clean the surface with the rubbing alcohol. And now I would help myself with my extra knife to get all the paint together, scrape it all well and put it aside where it needs to be. I'll normally make divisions on the paper and write the names in there. Next I'm going to be trying 111 and I'm going to be mixing more paint. So as you can see here, I have a lot more surface to be working. As I mentioned in the other video, you can never give a guideline into how many drops of oil to use because each color behaves differently. This one is Flux 050 from my S64 series and it absorbs quite a lot of oil. And different brands of paints will behave differently. Some require you to wait an hour or even 24 hours and then they start losing a little bit of oil, so it's better to work on the dry side. I always recommend working on the dry side, so you don't get a surprise. Okay, so that's pretty good. Nice and smooth. As you can see, I have more working length here because the knife is longer. So now I'm going to put it all together, pick it up, clean, and in this case I will help myself with the small one to pick up all the paint. and put it here. A 
Of course, also remember to clean your knives between colors. Also the edges. So as you can see, with these two knives, you're set. You don't need anything else. But if you have a different preference, you may want to have a small one in knife shape and a larger one symmetric. In this case, it's 113 and 185. So I'm also going to be showing you how these behave. For a small amount of blue, I'm going to be using the small knife. This one is quite flexible, so if you like that, you may like this one. And again, I help myself with the other knife. So as you saw, this one being more flexible, it may also be a good choice for painting with, if you do large format painting. This one has the longest uh, working blade, so if you mix a lot of paint, you may prefer this one, and it's also quite flexible. Remember to mix until you don't feel any graininess anymore. As you can see, maybe it's different for you, but for me, I find it a bit more difficult to pick up, to collect all the paints when the spatulas are softer. It's maybe a bit more pleasant to mix with. So yes, that's personal preference. So that was the comparison. As you can see, there is no huge difference here. If you are new at this and you don't really have a preference or don't know which to choose, I recommend that you just go with the set. You will get these two 
plus 61 for blending and if you have a preference for softer palette knives or maybe if you have joint problems you may prefer 185 or 113 and now I'm gonna be showing you uh, how I use these two palette knives for blending colors so when it comes to blending one color with another uh, and painting with it I prefer always to use a palette knife because if you use your brush you're just gonna destroy it these paints are basically glass so that's really really hard on brushes uh, when I'm mixing a very small amount of paint I use 61 this is actually my favorite palette to handle because it's really pleasant uh, it's really agile in your hand it's super super flexible it's very fine at the tip and it's really just a pleasure to use so when I'm mixing tiny amounts of paint I can use this tiny pointy bit and it's very easy to blend for example here I want to blend just a small amount of blue into the yellow because uh, yellow has less tinting strength and it's very easy to pick a very small amount And you can blend the colors very well with each other without destroying your brushes. So here we have a nice green. And when I want to mix a little bit more paint like I'm gonna be doing here, I tend to go for the 100 palette knife, which has a, it's a lot stronger. It has more spring, more body to it, so it makes faster work of mixing a larger amount of paint. And as I mentioned before, this is also a very good uh, kiln knife for uh, small pieces. <laughs> 